Hello. I'm on my lunch and yesterday I found a super cool spot that I would like to share with you guys. So, so I've been driving to work. I've noticed this garden kind of down tucked off the road I'm on called Centennial Gardens. Well, I came down yesterday to check it out because I'm me and I love gardens. Now, the fountains aren't running yet and not a lot of flowers are blooming except for some spring ones, but I wanted to share it with you guys. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna take a little walk around Centennial Gardens. All right, so it looks like in the summer, there's obviously that fountain. There's another one past the trees there. We've got a big fountain on either end. There's some beautiful blooming trees right now. I'll have to show you. And it looks like we had some hyacinths that are just about done. Beautiful box hedges that need some maintenance. But I love me a formal garden. And this one's close enough that I can walk to it on my lunch break. Also, it kind of looks like it's about to rain at any moment. And just look at how beautiful this place is here. Oh yeah, and that's Elitch Gardens, which is apparently a theme park, water park. Kind of hope to go sometime this summer because I think that would be fun. We've got this beautiful pergola over here. I'm wondering if these are a type of... They almost look like they were a type of uh, lilac, but I am not certain might have to snag a picture of those to paint those later. That's what I've been doing today. I've been walking around and just taking pictures so that I can paint because they have some, oh my gosh, I have to show you. They have some really pretty tulips that are kind of hiding away in there. Formal shaped garden, very, very classic. Here's a central fountain. Apparently, Nick heard that they're talking about shutting this place down because it doesn't get a lot of traffic, which would make me super, super sad. Like, super, super sad. Anyway, back to the flowers, because my favorite ones are just around over here. Doo -doo -doo. And they have these beautiful, deep purple parrot tulips. I have to show you guys, because these are the guys that I want to paint. Look at them. They're so pretty and they're so fascinating before they've uh, bloomed too. It's like, look at that guy. Just so pretty. So yeah, welcome to Centennial Gardens, right down on the banks of the South Platte River. And we're gonna go and I'll show you some trees in a moment. So around the entrance, they have, I mean, look at these beauties. I think they're crab apples, but they smell so lovely. And they're just so beautiful. I love how pink the little buds are, and then they open up to white. Here we go. Some tiny pink buds. Anyway, I'm gonna take you guys with me as I finish my walk back to work. So one of the things Denver is known for, especially down here by the South Platte, is the murals. That guy. And I'm hoping to get some more here. I'm running a little late, so this might be a quickie. But I want to take you down by Cherry Creek, which is usually where I walk every day on my lunch break. This is a very outdoor friendly town. There's lots to do. Just beyond that point to the left is the original flagship store for REI, which is in this really cool old uh, cable car building. I'll share that with you guys some other time. Right now I have to get on the pedestrian side. So I will see you back in a moment.
This is one of my favorite murals. It's all local artists, and they have murals all along this walking path down here by Cherry Creek. This one's a little weird, but it's cool. But yeah, welcome to Cherry Creek. The wind is picking up a little bit. So generally, on my lunch break, I get out and move because I went from working at a big, big box retailer and walking nine miles a day to sitting behind a desk. So, especially since I'm right across the street from this beautiful little walking path, I make a point to get out and get away from the computer. But we've had some good rain, so the creek is it's so pretty. Love it. Love, love, love it. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Thought I'd bring you guys along with me as I record the next episode of Bedtime Stories with Celestia Crane. So, join me on the journey. Hello my lovelies and welcome back to Bedtime Stories with Celosia Crane and the second half of Sumi and the Dragon. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this week's episode. <clears throat> now, if you remember, we left Sumi last week jumping on her horse and racing after the dragon. So, without further ado, let's continue and find out what is going to happen next to Suni in part two of Suni and the Dragon. Suni rode as fast as she could with the dragon always ahead. The smell of him was like rotten eggs and burned feathers. At midnight, they were deep in the mountains. All at once, the dragon disappeared into a jagged cave. Soon he tied the mare to a rock, left the hound guarding, and slipped up to peer inside. What she saw held her spellbound. She didn't know she was cold. She quite forgot to be frightened. There was the dragon laying on a rock. Before him, a young girl was dancing, the loveliest dance Suni had ever seen. Surely this was the Princess Blanche, her pale hair swinging as she spun. Suni was entranced and then horrified. For when Blanche had finished her dance, the dragon opened up his great red maw with teeth like sabers and swallowed her in one gulp. Soon he stood pale and trembling as the dragon spewed out a second girl into the cave, a beautiful girl with hair as red as fire. She began to sing, and surely this was the princess Ardis, for her sweet voice was the same Suni had heard two nights before, inside the dragon's stomach. Soon enough, though, the dragon opened up his great red maw, and Artis was swallowed again. And the dragon coughed up the third princess then, with hair like the darkest night. Got 
gotta get a drink. And the dragon coughed up the third princess then, with hair like the darkest night. She sat down before him obediently and began to tell a tale about a tailor in a bread box and a white rose. She could be no other than the princess Camilla. Surely she could not. Soon, too, Camilla was sucked up again. Then the dragon clamped his jaws tight together, turned around three times, and lay down with his back against the cave door. Now soon he could see nothing but his great scaly hide, and his snores rose like thunder on the cold midnight air. Soon he stood thinking what to do. She looked all around where the dragon blocked the door, and at last she found a bit of space between his hip and the stone. So she squeezed through into the cave. She felt around the walls in the utter dark. Let's try that again. 